So this tutorial, we're going to kind of go over how to force PTGUI to stitch things that naturally don't want to stitch. And by that, I mean is let's say you have a HDRI you shot where you have a big open sky, so big open field, something like that. And the common issue with these type of locations is uh, tracking markers. And if the software doesn't have anything to track as a stitching asset, it just won't. And so as you can see, when I click join, it has failed. It's going to just get weird. We have a blank hole here. It doesn't know where the information is. And even for this location, the fact that it's stitched this well is nice. And that's probably because of all the details we have in the foreground. But if you were, like, let's say, at a big open quarry or something, and you don't even have these types of details, it's going to have a hard time stitching. So the way around this problem is we create a template file. And what I usually do for this is I start off with a location that's very, very busy for a lot of tracking markers. So, for example, I shot a very urban, industrial, abandoned warehouse, and this had just lines, grunge, details all over the place. And this just gives me all kinds of markers to track. So once we do this, aligning, as you can see, perfectly perfectly matched up. All these things overhead, in the front, in the back, on the ground, they're all over the place. So then the other thing is before I go to final is I go to the mask area. I go on my tripod since my setup is always the same. And I'll go in and quickly mask out the tripod. Just like this. And that's because when I actually create the HDRIs, I don't want this fuzzy area around the tripod showing up in the HDRI. It makes it a little more annoying to clean up when I'm getting rid of the uh, the tripod in post. So I'm just going to go in and quickly just remove it. Just like so. All right. And you don't have to make it perfect because again, in Photoshop, you go and clean it up anyway. But in a nutshell, I just give it a little extra bleed just like that and I typically don't care to get rid of the legs because while my tripod head stays the same the legs could change based on how I rotate the uh, the camera so now that we have this set up all we have to do oh and the last thing but not least is I'll go check HDRI panorama change it to HDR instead of 20 30 10 I'll just make it a solid 20,000 pixels so this is kind of what I like to set up for the output specs. So what I'll go is file, uh, save as a template, and I'll name it a tutorial template. I misspelled template, but it doesn't matter. So anyhow, now we're going to click don't save. I don't care for that. We're going to go back to our clear sky location. Do the same thing, rotate the images, align them. And if your PT GUI is not up to date and you're using the old version, you could do the same exact thing. It's just uh, for masking, it has a few different visual things, but it's all the same. So now, okay, we're back to this awful problem. There's nothing happening here. It gets very weird down here. So all you have to go is file, apply template, and then we're going to go to tutorial template. And then it does this. And you're going to see, there you go, our sky's there, the ground, tripods taken out. So before we do anything, you can have this optimize button. And on the old version, I believe there's just a word that says optimize, and you click on it. It's like highlighted in blue. So this window comes up. Um, sometimes it says good, very good. Sometimes it says bad. I really do not care what this says, because at the end of the day, I know that my setup is identical. So things will match regardless of what this says. So good, bad, doesn't matter. I just press OK. There we go. So now I just go to mask and I just double check my tripod mask. As you can see, it has shifted a little bit. So easy fix. Again, for me, it's the uh, the black edges that I do not want because it's going to feather off. So there we go. And if you want, you could go in or make it neutral like so. So we're going to leave a little bit more of that detail. makes it nice for clone stamping. And then we'll go in, take that out. And that, in a nutshell, is it. And if you go to the uh, the Create HDRI area, 
as you can see, all the settings are preserved just like that. And now we have a perfectly stitched HDRI, even though naturally did not want to stitch. So in a nutshell, what you want to do is you want to capture two sources. You want to make sure your setup is always identical, whether you're using a nodal head of some sort, but you want to make sure that it's always shot the same, where you go front, up, down, or front, down, up, does not matter, but consistency is important. And then once you have that set up, you shoot two locations, one very busy, and then the other one you could have whatever you want, because at that point you use that very busy location as your template file, your master file. And then taking out the tripod and such, this is very opinionated. It's if you want to do it, if you don't want to, don't do it. I typically do it because I don't like the feathering it creates when I spit out an HDRI. It makes it more annoying to clone stamp out later on. So that's it.